Hello and welcome to a new episode of the Will and Twine Fiber Studio Knitting Podcast. My name is Jule and I'm the dyer and maker behind Will and Twine Fiber Studio, which is a small creative space located here in northern Germany where I play with natural dyes and natural yarns. Um, today I want to introduce a new yarn to you that's incredibly special to me and it's it's a bit difficult to sort my thoughts today because it's just I want to tell you everything about this and give you a good idea of what it's all about um, but yeah there's so much to tell I hope it's gonna be it's not gonna be a too rambly video but I hope it's gonna be nice for you to have a little insight on how this yarn has been made so um, about two years ago I started thinking about making this new type of yarn but it was very difficult to find a way to make one that would meet my um, ethical standards because yeah um, one part of this when it's commercially produced was something that I could not that did not align with my values and my ethical um, like how I I would like a yarn to be produced ethically so um, I was I started to research um, about alternatives and everything and yeah finally found a way to make this in a more ethically and sustainably pleasing way for myself um, so let me spill the tea on this <laughs> Um, we got a custom spun, um, ethically produced silk mohair yarn. Um, this one is Cloud. That's how I named it because to me it looks like a fluffy cloud. <laughs> and it has been a long time in the making as mentioned. So how did this come to life? Let me sh share a bit about this because yeah, I should maybe mention what I was looking for and why I decided to do things differently and also share a couple of insights on how my mill operated with this and uh, without further ado, let me jump right in. So um, let me first talk about the fibers of mohair that are in this one. So mohair is a fiber that comes from the angora goat, which is a type of goat that mostly lives in like very moderate climates, um, which is why the biggest amount of mohair, both commercial and sustainable mohair, is produced in uh, South Africa. Um, I think they are the largest producers, not I think, I know they are the largest, they, they produce the largest amount of the world's mohair demand. Um, and of course there are a couple of smaller farms um, also in European countries and um, all over the world but um, for commercial and larger amount production South Africa is the way to go and um, these goats um, they are they, they produce a very small amount of fiber which is already why this is a very precious and very luxurious fiber and um, with how I wanted it to be is because I cannot go there I could not go to South Africa and look at everything I was very into or I, I really wanted to know that the fiber I'm sourcing for this um, yarn is ethically sourced and to ensure that I um, decided to go for an RMS certified um, mohair fiber which ensures that this is first of all traceable um, so I can know where this fiber comes from exactly plus it has um, a very long list of criteria that has to be fulfilled during the production process so the RMS is the responsible mohair standard um, certificate that has been um, like that is by the um, textile exchange um, organization what which is an organization that's trying to um, make any kind of textile 
production processes and from the farming to a finished garment um, or a finished yarn um, more sustainable, more traceable and um, all over more um, respectful for the earth. So the RMS uh, is part of the textile exchange, textile change um, network, let's say it like this. And this certificate um, is a very um, wide array of criteria that goes from the farming process, so animal welfare and how the, the, the animals are treated, how the people have to work with them, how the people who work with the animals are treated, um, to the whole production process, so how the mill treats the fibers, um, what detergents are used during washing, um, how the machinery can be operated and how the staff of the mill can be um, treated. So the whole production process um, from farming to transportation to the milling process um, is RMS certified. So this yarn is fully traceable and um, all the production process has been very closely watched um, and has to fulfill all the criteria of the RMS certificate. So um, yeah, that was one thing that was very important to me regarding the mohair fibers and also the whole production process. Um, next up, what was very important to me, because it doesn't really make sense to me to make an ethically produced mohair yarn with sustainable and ethically sourced mohair fibers and then use commercially milled silk because um, in commercial silk production um, the silkworm um, when it goes to metamorphosis to become a butterfly um, it builds a cocoon which is the actual silk fiber um, and to commercially um, get hold of the silk cocoon and the material of the cocoon um, the cocoons are thrown into boiling water and the silkworms just die. So yeah, in commercial um, silk production, the silkworms are boiled alive and they just die within the cocoons, just so the, the silk um, thread can also be pulled off as a whole. And um, it also yields a much bigger um, outcome of silk um, to do it that way. But for me and uh, how I like, um, things to be and how my ethical um, values are I I didn't align like I, I didn't want to have a yarn with this type of silk in it and so I made sure that this yarn only contains cruelty free silk so um, with this process um, it follows the idea of not harming or, or being respectful with the animal um, producing the silk fibers and so the silk worm um, has the chance to hatch um, from its cocoon and um, is not killed during the process and then the silk is taken from the uh, cocoon where the moth has hatched. Um, what this means is that first of all the process is much slower than the commercial process because it takes a lot more time for the moth to hatch. So in the production, the production takes a lot longer. Plus I think there's one third less of silk material that can be um, gotten from these um, hatched cocoons. So uh, these type of cruelty free silks are Quite a bit more expensive and it's actually not so easy to get a hold of them because yeah not many silk farmers are interested in this type of um, production because it's harder and less you get less for what you work for so um, yeah but I was able to um, to get some of this cruelty free silk fiber for this yarn and so we have fully cruelty-free and ethically produced um, yarn when it comes to the fibers. Um, but this is not where it stopped because it still is um, comes from far away. So I wanted to make sure to still keep production or transportation uh, or keep production as close to the farmers as I could and also have the 
um, transportation as low as possible and so I went for a mill that's local to the farmers um, and went with a South African mill um, also for other reasons but I'm going to talk about this later but so a lot of mohair um, that's produced also for the clothing industry is um, produced in Italy. So the fiber comes from South Africa and it's most of the time also milled, like washed in South Africa and then shipped to Italy to be spun into yarns and sometimes woven into fabrics. Um, but that really didn't make sense to me because if the fiber is already there, why not look for a production site that would be able to mill the yarn where it comes from and also um, maybe ensure that the whole process and the whole industry can be strengthened in the area where the fibers come from. And that is something that my mill really focuses on because they have a very strong, um, like in their own values, sustainability is very high up on the list and they are focusing on sustainability on so many different levels and I'm incredibly happy to have met them because it's awesome what they do. Um, not only do they um, help with local production because they are a big facility that's able to um, provide for jobs and everything, but they also offer educational programs for um, locals and also make it possible for people to work remotely if they cannot come to the mill. And yeah, I'm just, they are just really focused on the people behind everything. Um, which is very awesome because um, I spoke to one of the mill people for a longer time just to, to know, to get to know them better and to get to know their processes and their values and she told me that there still is um, a lot of, like there are a lot of issues with education in South Africa because some areas are just so rural that it's difficult to um, provide education everywhere in the needed um, intensity and so I'm really happy that this mill is even um, working towards uh, educating people where they can and yeah it's just they are doing a lot of social work as well um, but not only that um, I'm also it's so interesting because when I talk to them they shared a lot of um, insights and one of them being like one of them stuck with me because I thought it's so clever and so nice at the same time because um, they only use biodegradable um, scouring soaps to wash the greasy fleeces when they come off the goat they are very greasy and like with sheep's wool and they get washed um, with a biodegradable detergent and because it's a very water intensive process they keep the waters from the washing and with all the dirt and the biodegradable detergent and they transport it to a local citrus farm where then the citrus plants are both watered and fertilized from you know all the vegetable matter and all the uh, all the cells from and, and the grease from uh, the mohair so it's actually one one uh, business's waste is another one's treasure and I think that's so cool because then uh, the mill person told me that the once I think once a month or so there's someone coming with a big box of citrus fruits um, that the whole staff at the mill can then enjoy and I think that's something so nice and that shows how businesses can really interact um, even though they are in completely different fields so yeah that's I think that's something that really shows how this mill is looking into sustainability and how they are really aware of their impact um, and I'm just incredibly happy to have found them and to be able to work with them and create this beautiful yarn so um, that's about the backstory and I, I should maybe tell one more thing about this because that was also very um, special to me because when I found them and I was able to understand everything with the certification process and I was at the point where I was like okay I trust the production of this yarn in this way then there came the minimum amount that I had to purchase and it was a lot and with such a high amount in mohair fibers 
it was really expensive and I was not sure if I could make it so I was really like I postponed it for a while and I wasn't sure if it's gonna work because I'm still just a one-person business and such a big chunk of money was an investment and I didn't know if it's all gonna work out and I still don't know so it was you know it was a bit scary but then the last autumn or so um, you all showed me so much support and I was able to purchase the minimum amount because of your support and that's something I really want to stress because it's not you know I can produce yarn and I can dye yarn and I can do my best to market it but if you don't support me then I'm not going to be able to do projects like this and so I really want to thank you for all your support um, over the last year because this was the only way how it was possible to make this yarn and to you know move a step towards a more sustainable knitting world I guess and that's something that's so dear to my heart and that's what I'm trying to do with everything I create and with everything I do and so this is incredibly special to me and I'm so thankful for being able to contribute to a more sustainable knitting world this way so thank you so much I'm getting really dark here again <laughs> sorry is this okay I'm not sure it's gonna be so messy today but I still wanted to share everything about this so Next up, let me share all the specs of Cloud because not only is the backstory interesting, but you also want to know what you're going to knit with, right? So um, it has a 420 meters per 50 grams. So it's 50 gram skeins as opposed to our regular bases that are normally 100. So you can see they're a tiny bit smaller. Um, but that is because it's a lace weight yarn and so it's incredibly fine and thin and it has so much meter rich in one 50 gram skein already and so I thought it's more versatile to because otherwise I would have to sell like 800 meters in one skein <laughs> and I thought if you want to just do an accessory or so that might be a little much so these are 420 meters per 50 gram skeins and yeah they are a traditional silk mohair yarn where the silk thread is wrapping around the fluffy mohair fibers and creates this beautiful halo type of yarn. Come on camera. This is just the undyed white by the way. So yeah, this is our new base cloud and I'm just incredibly excited about this and cannot wait um, to share more of this with you and to explore it more because I can totally see, I dyed the first collection of it and I totally can see that there's so many, you know, it's just different to handle and that makes it so exciting for myself as well. So um, yeah, I really enjoy exploring this new yarn and the new techniques that I have to use and everything. But yeah, speaking of the collection, I will link the video of the colorway preview here because that one is up as well and there I show you the full rainbow that I dyed on this base um, for the February collection. Um, it actually has become quite a wide array because I was just experimenting and experimenting and it was just so enjoyable for me actually because even though it's nice to dye any kind of color but yeah you know having something new every now and then can be really exciting so yeah I have made quite a wide array <laughs> and it's going to be available as part of the February collection on the 24th of February at 8 p.m. CET. That's next Friday and I hope you're gonna love it as much as I do. I try to make a lot per color but still um, I don't know if it's enough so maybe if you would like some of this yarn try to be on time for the update because I'm, tr I'm going to relaunch this. I, I have enough of it to have it for a couple of updates but still um, it might be because that's how it is with new yarns they usually go quite quickly so yeah that's it about cloud and 
If you're curious about something or if something was not explained well and you are not sure about the process, let me see if I can, for the final five minutes, turn the light up again. Um, feel free to message me and I'm going to answer um, any questions because I know that this is very different from, uh, like the whole production process is very different from just a regular sheep's wool yarn. So um, yeah, in case you're interested in that. I'm also going to link um, all the resources, so the RMS and the, the textile change website. I'm going to link that below just so you know uh, what it's all about. And you can read everything for yourself because I think, especially with the, the RMS, they are very transparent and they have a whole um, website where you can download all the guidelines around the RMS and what it includes. Well, it includes pretty much everything, <laughs> uh, every part of the production process, but still it's very interesting to read and I really enjoyed reading it. So um, I hope that's something uh, you might be interested in as well. I'm going to link it all down below. And I guess that is it for today. Um, I hope the light issues weren't too annoying. I'm really sorry it was so all over the place. But um, yeah, I'm going to end the video here and uh, wishing you a lovely weekend. And see you next time. Bye!